Hi, welcome to your favorite podcast, Closing Deals and Heels. I am your host, Kayla Hodges. And babe, if you are dealing with people that are being a little bit more reluctant when it comes to the sales process, when it comes to them committing and moving forward with you, you're definitely not alone. I've had several sales reps tell me personally that they're dealing with this that they're seeing a lot more people be a little bit more uh, conservative when it comes to spending funds. And the reason is, is because of this economic uh, downturn that we're all seeing. We're in the beginning of a recession. Not only is that affecting, you know, just my sales reps, but it's also affecting a lot of people here in the United States, as well as I'm sure other places. But, you know, specifically here talking about even prices of, you know, things at the grocery store are a little bit more than they used to be. And why does this matter for you? Becoming a sales rep, like knowing how to sell um, and having that skill is the one thing that's absolutely recession proof. The problem is, is that your lay down sales and if you have basic sales skills right now, they're not going to cut it over the next three to five months. In fact, it's either going to be where you don't have those lay down sales and you lose about half of your income or you learn how to acquire the right skills so that you can be closing a lot more and keep your job as well as flourish and grow. And the only way to do that is by actually obtaining those skills, real, real sales skills. And here's the problem with that. The problem is that so many sales trainings are completely awful. They don't work with human behavior. They don't work with allowing you to feel comfortable with selling. Like there's so many things that are absolutely wrong with it. And um, I'm here just to shed a couple things, a couple bulbs of light on this today. I remember going to a sales workshop that I went to years ago. Um, and my boss paid for this sales workshop and it was $10,000 to go for this workshop. And I remember I went there and, you know, had a books, was so excited. I'm like, God, I want to learn sales. Like I'm going to learn it in two days. Like this is what's going to happen. And I go there and, um, man, every single thing that they were teaching me, I thought was brilliant. I was like, this is so good and how to overcome objections. And, you know, like I wasn't afraid of like being in role plays because I had been in role plays at my work. So what a role play is, if you're not sure, is like they put you um, in a scenario, kind of like you're the prospect, this person is a sales rep and they're trying to sell you and you come with objections for them and they try to overcome them. And it's really, really good. I do role plays with my girls all the time. And it's because it makes you like put yourself in it. It's one thing talking about sales. It's another thing doing sales, if that makes sense, right? So if you are put in a real life situation, you're practicing in role plays, the benefit of that is that you can fuck up as many times as humanly possible and it's okay. I'd rather you mess up in a sales role play than mess up with a prospect on a call. If you mess up with a prospect on a call, you lose money and you lose opportunity. If you mess up as many times as possible in a role play, you're gonna be completely fine because you are practicing, you are learning. Now, if you are learning with the wrong tools, do you see how that could possibly um, create really bad habits for you? Especially when they challenge human behavior, especially when they challenge somebody's ego. You know, the other day I heard a TikTok of this guy and this guy was a car sales guy. And the man goes, hey, you know, I really appreciate your time today, man. I just, you know, I need to talk to my wife about this. And he goes, oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. You know, I'll be right here. How about you call your wife? And then, you know, let, let me know what she says, right? And he was training people how to do this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> if somebody looks at you and you're like, hey, why don't you just call them right now and, and do it? What does that do? First of all, it establishes like that you don't respect and trust that person. And secondly, it challenges their ego. It's like prove, prove that you're telling the truth. Prove to me that that's the issue. And when you are in prove me and challenge me and mm, 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 you're in opposition with somebody and it's, they're not going to be influenced by you. They're not going to be persuaded by you. So back to this story where I'm learning all this role play. 
So I'm learning the role play and I'm in there and I'm not afraid to get in there, right? And I've, I've learned enough and I've done it enough. And I had all these objection handling cards and I knew exactly what to say, when to say it, all the same. Blah, blah, blah. And I left that, you know, workshop and I felt like, mm, I know sales now. Ooh, I, I know sales. I'm good at this. And, you know, not only did I feel like I knew sales, but I had a confidence about me. And I feel like that's why sometimes people closed. And then I realized that they come back to me and they, you know, weren't happy with their decision. And it's because I was trying to push them into a sale versus them convincing themselves. And it just didn't work. It didn't work. And I, I tried to teach some of this stuff for a really long time. And it's really frustrating me because I'm like, man, all this stuff that I, I taught or that I helped people with, like it didn't really actually help anybody. You know, people would say stuff like, oh, sales is a numbers game. It's a numbers game. And <laughs> it really isn't. You know, if you know what to say and how to say it, it's not a numbers game at all. It's a like, how much money do you want to make game? <laughs> because you're using your energy efficiently here. Now, I want to circle all the way back down to the beginning of what I was first talking about. If you are in sales right now, and you are a sales rep, a recession is coming. The, there's an economic downturn right now. People are experiencing it. People are feeling it right now. And what do people do whenever there is economic crisis? They go and they get the cash and they hold on to it, right? Emergency cash, like holding on to cash. I think Great Depression, people taking all the money out of the base, like holding on to it. And um, I'm not saying that we're there right now, but I am saying that that is common human behavior. When there is crisis, people want to feel safe. The best way for somebody to feel safe is to not go spend loads of money right now on things that they don't think matter. You're with me. And, and so if that's the case, all the sales calls that you're getting, if you're an average sales rep, right, doing training that, that you have been trained, average sales training, which most of these trainings are based out of the 1970s, 1980s, boiler room, pushy, manipulative sales styles. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Most of them come from there, right? So if you have these tactics that work against human behavior, especially in a downturn of economic resources, do you think that you're going to be closing more or maybe possibly closing a little bit less? And here's the problem. When you have a sales rep that's trained like that, right? And they're trained in manipulation and, and pushy tactics. And, you know, it's not necessarily their fault. They were just trained that way. Um, and sometimes their ego is attached with that. Have you ever found somebody like that? Ever met a sales rep that's like, head is so big, it's like disgusting? Yeah, yeah. Ego, ego, ego. When you have a guy like that or a person like that and they stop selling, what do they do? Emotions rise. And they push harder. Because they think that they're just being passionate, they're being determined, they're being committed. But in actuality, it pushes people further away. And so they start making less and less and less money. All the laydowns have been completely gone. All the sales that came in that were ready to pay, uh, they're gone because people are a little bit more worried. They're in fear. And so what's going to have to happen here is having a higher skill set. Not guessing and doing the work, right? When it comes to it being a numbers game, oh my God, I remember calling um, event leads, calling calling leads, I had to call, you know, this one was a little bit easier. We had to call a minimum of 100 people a day. I was calling 100 people. I was also running a team of 14 people and making sure that everyone was hitting their numbers. And I was also, you know, hitting my numbers as well. So I wanted to make sure that I could be leading, you know, with everyone, not ahead, not telling them to do something that I wouldn't willingly be able to do. And man, calling, 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 getting on phone with people, right? And I was trying to like start persuading these people as to why they they should be buying this ticket over this ticket and just like still like some pushy sales techniques here. And I remember there is this one guy and I was trying to upgrade him to a VIP ticket. And this ticket, you know, originally is $500. VIP is five grand. I make 10% on this, right? So I definitely want him to buy a $5,000 ticket over a $500 ticket. And I'm asking him, you know, um, when you go to these events, sir, like, do you go to learn or to make money? He's like, I like to go make money. You know, I'm like, okay, perfect. Well, 
I think that you should definitely be in the VIPs. The VIPs are great. That's where all the people are that you actually make money. Maybe you can find a client there and blah, blah, blah. And just going on and on and on about the features and the benefits and the services and how great it was and how awesome it was. And just kept telling him and telling him how he gets to do it. And, and he was like, oh, I'll think about it. And then I kept sending him videos and videos and videos and blah, blah, blah. And eventually he's like, hey, we're not going to this event at all. And that was super frustrating for me. And I'm like, oh. And I reviewed the call and I listened to it and I'm like, I wonder like if there was something that I said or that I did that like got him to like run away. And, um, you know, for the next guy that came up, I started trying out like a different strategy. I'm like, how can I make this guy feel like being a VIP is really valuable and important without me telling him it is? And so I started thinking about really good questions that I could possibly ask because I felt like I was going somewhere. I'm like, you know, I'm just curious, you know, if, if you're coming to these events, is it for you to, you know, learn more or like to make money, or build connections? Like what is your intention here, right? Just so I can understand. Now notice I said, just so I can understand. The reason why I'm doing that is because sometimes when you ask questions, it could feel like just a normal sales rep. And people don't like being sold to, <laughs> they just don't. So um, there was a study done where there was a, a line, I believe it was in a library in New York, I had to double check this. Um, I think this is from the book Influence. There's a line for somebody to go get a paper printed and there's a big line in the library and they did the study twice, right? And the first line, they got somebody to run up to the front of the line and they asked them like, hey, can I please cut a line, you know, to do this paper really fast. And they did that all day long with that line, okay? And about 30% of people actually let the guy cut in line. The second line that they did the next day is they said, hey, hey, can I please cut in line? I have to, you know, um, print this paper real fast, copy this paper really fast. I'm, I'm late to a meeting at work. And 70% of people let that guy cut. And the reason why is because humans like to understand why. Very interesting. We don't like to be in the dark. We want to understand there's a reason for what you're doing. So when you say like, just so I can understand, it helps them realize that you're asking this with an intention, not just to ask. So, you know, I asked him like, well, like, are you trying to learn, trying to make money, trying to make business connections? Like what's your intention here? Just so I can understand. Right. And he's like, oh, well, um, you know, I, I really want to do both. Like I want to learn, I want to, you know, hopefully meet some new clients. Like it's gonna be really, really amazing. And I asked him like, okay, uh, absolutely you get to do that. Um, I'm curious, like, do you think um, there will be more of your clients in like a VIP area? Or do you feel like maybe possibly they're gonna be, you know, um, out in the crowd? Um, I'm not sure if you're aware because we do have some like VIP like parties and stuff afterwards. And I just want to make sure that you're in the right place so we can support you. And what I do here, I didn't tell him, hey, you need to be over here. I'm asking him, what do you think will be more valuable? Where do you think your people will be? Oh, I didn't realize that. What kind of people are over there getting clarity, wanting information and going there? And, um, you know, I definitely could have gone further in this moment, but I realized something. I'm like, people don't like being told what to do. And when you ask neuroemotional persuasion questions, questions that work with human behavior, that allow people to start persuading themselves, it changes everything for them. There is an old model of selling and there is a new model of selling. People have grown. People have changed. People do not like being sold to tell that they're wrong or made feeling um, incompetent in any way. People are woke. Man, my daughter is so smart. She's way beyond where I was at her age. People, there's so much information, resources, like the buyer has changed. Buyers have felt horrific sales conversations. They know what it feels like to be sold to, to not be cared about. And the thing is, is that you, if you're selling, have to be unlike anybody else if you actually want to get ahead in your sales career. With 
throwing out the old model, the boiler room, the pushy, manipulative, consultative selling, like the, the spins, like all the selling that focuses on like yourself versus the client. And I'm not saying that every single one of those things are absolutely wrong. A hundred percent. I definitely take pieces here and there from, you know, selling that I like, you know, and turn it to where I can make it prospect focused. But I am saying there was an old model and there's definitely a new model. Recently partnering with Jeremy Miner and Seventh Level has been one of the most epic experiences of my life. And um, I talk about this in another episode, but what was so cool, because we started our company in September, Elite Sales Women. And starting that company was like so scary, but what was really cool was the training. I was talking about like, what would it look like to be heart driven in your sales process to actually care about people, to stand in integrity and leadership and, you know, built out this training, had, you know, all these women in. And when seventh level went through my training, went through my sales training, it was so in alignment to what we were doing there that they were like, hey, we should definitely do business together. And then when I sat down with Jeremy and went over NEPQ, went over neuro emotional persuasion questioning, I realized that he did something absolutely incredible. He named different parts of what I was teaching and gave it structure, gave it meaning, gave it understanding to where it was easier to teach. NEPQ is a very distinctive process that has a system, has a format, regardless of what industry that you're in, that ask specific questions that allow a prospect in you to connect, to be on the same page, on the same team, going to the same direction, to where it doesn't feel pushy. You don't feel like you're on opposite ends. You are actually asking this person questions that allow their brain to find the answer to where they start persuading themselves. Very distinctive, very interesting questions. I'm in control of the entire sales conversation. I know one of the two or three answers that they could possibly say based on the question that I'm asking. Wouldn't it be important for you to understand how the sales process works and how people's brains work so that you can ask the specific question at the right time with the right tone so that people start persuading themselves? And, you know, what we did on our side is we took an EPQ and we added um, an EPQ red, which was adding a feminine perspective to this, as well as trauma training and emotional help so that the women that are going through this can feel grounded and in their leadership and work through whatever they're going through. And the sales process feels familiar to them. The words that are coming out of their mouth feel good to them, right? It feels feminine. It feels in alignment. It's, it's so important. And the reason why I'm stressing on this so much is that because the next few months are coming, this next year is coming. And those that do not have the skills, the new model of selling in place, like you are going to find yourself really, really frustrated because all the lay down sales, all the easy targets, all the ones that we're going to, Hey, like, let's just go or the pushy sales. Like it's not going to work anymore because people are holding on to their money more. And unless you understand an APQ red, unless you understand how to ask specific questions at the right time and using a tonality that allows somebody to drop their guard so that they can persuade themselves into doing something, you're going to find yourself real struggling. It's not going to feel good. Recessions are the best possible time for sales reps. You can make a lot of money because companies need cash flow and a trained a trained sales professional will be able to understand how to get cash flow through their sales ability. And if you don't have that sales ability, you are going to find yourself at a loss. You know, we have a, an incredible, um, Facebook group called women in sales, where we constantly are giving you trainings as well as uh, client interviews. And I just get in there and pour into you guys, give you so much resources. I highly recommend you to check that out. And if you are like, Hey, Kayla, like I do not want to go into the next few months without understanding how to really sell. I'm struggling. Like if you're not hitting a consistent minimum, $10,000 a month, right. And for my people that are hitting 10, like 30 is a new 10. If you finally hit 10, then your next floor is at 30 mark. If you're not hitting a minimum of $10,000 every single month consistently, like we have a real big problem coming up and it's time to look in the mirror and say, Hey, like it's time for me to obtain better skills. Like what is more riskier right now? 
Is it more risky for you to go into this recession without these skills? Or for you to get the right coach, the right training, the right mentor, the right people, the right resources, the right scripts, so you actually know what you're doing, so you can actually make the money and you can feel completely safe during this downturn. You have every single thing inside of you to figure this out. It's about being with the right people, the right environment, the right training, so you can actually learn a new model that works with human behavior that actually helps you, supports you, honors you. I can't say this enough. Uh, The community and my girls are absolutely epic. I'm here to honor you, support you, guide you. Like I'm going to be real, real and raw with you. I will not sugarcoat things like you get to win. And it freaking pisses me off and breaks my heart that there is women out there. Maybe it's you that are working so hard and you're not getting where you want to go. Working and working and working on a hamster wheel, feeling like you're not going anywhere. And that's not fair. That's just because you have not acquired the right skills in order to make money. That's it. That is it. I wish somebody could reach down and give me an opportunity like this like 10 years ago and tell me what to do. I had no idea. I fell on my face over and over and over and over again. Falling on your face is not fun. Making money is, is, is fun. Making no money, not fun. Stressed out, not fun. Telling your kid why you can't buy them something, not fun. You know, worrying, not fun. Like, choose your heart. Choose your heart. Um, I hope this resonated with you. Please make sure you're subscribing. If you are not, send this to a friend. Like, learn the skills, babe. You have what it takes. And to be taught by women who understand women and really put this in a perspective where you actually get it and it feels in alignment for you is freaking everything. Any BQ Rad will change your life just like it changed mine. I honor you. I appreciate you. I will see you soon. Thank you so much. <laughs>